Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are two of the most exciting young players in the NBA. And though both are under 26 years old, they are the two stars of the odds-on favorites to win the title, the Boston Celtics. Why? All you have to do is watch them play, and you'll get it. Indeed, their combined scoring total is among the best in the league's history. Tatum is scoring 30.6 points per game, while Brown is getting 27.2. The combined 57.8 the two are scoring in tandem is mind-boggling. Indeed, if the season ended today, it would be the highest shared average of all time. They come out ahead of Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant in 2001, 57.2 points per game. Larry Bird and Kevin McHale in 1987, 54.2 points per game. LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, 52.2 points per game. No one doubts their quality anymore. Last year, the duo led the Celtics to the NBA Finals. But there are still doubts over whether they are genuinely title-caliber players. Brown was drafted third in the 2016 NBA Draft, coming in as a 2015 McDonald's All-American. Behind who? Ben Simmons and Brandon Ingram. His immense talent was easy to spot. But scouts had some concerns over the outside shooting and ball handling struggles he had at Berkeley. Jason was the third pick in the 2017 draft after being a 2016 All-American and the 2016 Gatorade National Player of the Year. Yup, third pick again. Boston picked him up behind Markel Fultz and Lonzo Ball. Good job. Tatum spent one year at Duke before going so high, indicating how hyped the player was. If so, the Celtics were expecting him to be the next face of the franchise. Instead, as a rookie in 2017-2018, he wasn't ready to lead the team but showed incredible potential by becoming the first since Stephen Curry to finish their first year with a thousand or more points and over 40% from the three-point arc. Brown appears to have felt somewhat threatened by the arrival of Tatum. And who can blame him? He was a similar player, with slightly more impressive credentials, taking over as the future of the Celtics. Brown had seemed pretty mediocre in his rookie season in 2016-2017. The talent came out in spurts, but the wing only managed a 6.6 point average. Like other young players with supreme athletic gifts, Jalen was trying to do too much too quickly. The spotlight and expectation that he contributed immediately to a playoff contending team didn't help either. In 2017-2018, Tatum was the shiny bright object in the spotlight. That took much pressure off Brown, who made great strides in his second year. Jason did better in his first year than Brown had, with 13.9 points, 1.6 assists, and 5 rebounds that year. Due to his solid performances, Jason was voted third in the Rookie of the Year sweepstakes, behind Donovan Mitchell and Ben Simmons. In the meantime, Brown improved by 10 points over his rookie year numbers. The two youngsters helped to a better record. Indeed, the Celtics that year punched above their weight and went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, where they lost in seven to LeBron and the Cavaliers. But if it seemed like the future for the Celtics was paved with gold, trouble arose soon. In 2018-2019, the team regressed, and their record went down from .671 to .598. People started whispering that the two young players were incompatible, and Boston should trade one of them and build veterans around the other. In 2019-2020, Tatum established himself as a superstar with 23 points per game. Meanwhile, Brown was also hitting 20 points per game, but the team again faltered at the Eastern Conference Finals, losing to the Heat. Progress had been patchy since the Celtics had picked Tatum and Brown and designated them the faces of the franchise, but there had been movement in the right direction nonetheless. But 2019-2020 was nothing short of a disaster. The teams finished with a .500 record and were beaten 4-1 by the Nets in the first round. Much had gone wrong, and not all of it was preventable. Both young stars spent some time out injured, but Marcus Smart and Kemba Walker had worse problems. That threw off the whole team. Tatum picked up the slack and almost willed the team into the playoffs. But the team rhythm was off, and the forward couldn't carry the team alone. 
but what was genuinely inexcusable was the defense. The Celtics were 14th overall in defense, simply not good enough. Soon the rumors swirled that Boston would trade Jalen at the first opportunity, but Brown wouldn't hear of it. Instead, the player was upbeat about the future and said, if we get over this slump and continue to learn, I think there's a lot of good basketball on the other side. I can only control what I can control. Championship winning teams aren't all about the quality of the players. Chemistry can be just as important. And some observers have raised doubts over how well the two stars get along personally. Last season ended with a bang for the Celtics. They overcame expectations and reached the NBA Finals. Though Boston succumbed to the Golden State Warriors in the final, the future appeared rosy for the young team that almost went all the way. But just a few months earlier, Boston was struggling. Halfway through the season, they stood at 11th in the Eastern Conference with an 18-21 record. So even reaching the play-in seemed like a stretch in early 2022. On ESPN, analyst Kendrick Perkins concluded, When you look at the Celtics team right now, I think the word is broken. But something just clicked in the last calendar year. The Celtics' front office made some baller moves, bringing in Derek White and Daniel Tice to complement the existing skeleton of strong, talented players. They provided a gritty defense grounding to the flashy team that had been notably missing. But more than anything, the attitudes and relationship of the big two, namely Tatum and Brown, shifted to the more favorable ground. The two deny that there is any problem. Jalen said, If y'all want to hear it from me, that's my dog. But when Tatum discussed the relationship, the forward seemed to acknowledge that some tension was involved, but suggested it positively affected both players. In a way, we're pushing each other. There have been times when he did something in a game, and I'm thinking like, damn, I'm trying to do that. And some of the things I did, he's told me the same thing. So in everything we do, we compete in a good way. I'm pushing him. We're playing one-on-one -on -one after practice. There is certainly precedent for that. Sometimes competition can add some spice to team chemistry. Look at the Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal tandem. The tensions between the two were occasionally unbearable. The center felt that Bryant was a selfish player who took too many shots. During a bad stretch, a reporter asked Shaq about the Lakers' problem. The big man pointed straight at Kobe and said, there's the problem. But that didn't stop them from winning three consecutive NBA championships in 2000-2002. When Kobe passed away, Shaq remembered how the twosome always managed to put the bad blood behind them and win. Make no mistake, even when folks thought we were on bad terms, when the cameras were turned off, he and I would throw a wink at each other and say, let's go whoop some ass. The best case scenario for the Celtics was always that their relationship developed similarly, where the two push each other to do better. This year, that is undoubtedly happening. If you watch these two players, there is one clear thing uniting them, an overwhelming drive and desire to win. Tatum says, we're two of the hungriest players in the league. We're still trying to get there. And all that talk about how Brown and Tatum couldn't play together? Ironically, that ended up helping both of them. Because if they have one thing in common, it's the desire and ability to prove the naysayers wrong. After beating the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals, a delighted Tatum couldn't wait to rub it in the critics' faces and said, saying we need to split the group up, get rid of somebody, or me and JB can't play together, that fueled us. And all the great duos had that effect on each other. What is the point of playing with a brilliant counterpart unless they inspire you to be better? The two have had so much success this year that experts compare them to the ultimate championship partnership, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. On December 23rd, the Celtics played the Timberwolves. Tatum notched 30 points, and Brown scored 36 points on the way to an impressive 121-109 victory. Their remarkable performances marked the 17th time they scored over 30 this season. In addition, it saw them pass Pippen and Jordan in the number of Duel Over 30 concerts. So, it was inevitable that some comparisons would be drawn. But of course, there is one massive difference. 
Scotty and MJ won six titles together and absolutely dominated an entire decade of basketball. Meanwhile, Tatum and Brown keep getting closer but haven't won a ring yet. Jason has kept the comparisons in proportion. At a press conference, he said, Last year, y'all wanted to trade one of us. Now you're saying, Mike and Scotty. We're not as bad as you said, but we're not as good as Mike and Scotty. And he has a point. The media tend to overhype everything, the good and the bad. As good as the Celtic stars are right now, and they are historically excellent, they can't be compared to the Bulls legends until the rings start rolling in. Sure, they lost to the Warriors in the final, but there was something historic and seemingly inevitable about Curry and his boys last season. The team that came into 2023 with the most upside and brightest future was Boston. The front office did not rest on the laurels of overachievement. The arrival of Danilo Gallinari and Malcolm Brogdon added new dimensions to the team. The wealth of experience the two players bring gives a more solid foundation for the spectacular young duo. But mostly, Brown and Tatum have learned from each other and developed an undying mutual respect. Right now, the Celtics are the title favorites for a reason. They are no longer a bunch of uncoordinated stars. They are a team.